Phil Robertson, the founder of Duck Commander, told a story once that really intrigued me and I've never forgotten it. He said that uh, he was fishing, and this was before really Duck Commander began. He was a commercial fisherman. And uh, he was fishing and raising his family and feeding them on these fish, and yet he had other what he called river rats stealing his fish. Now, you know, at this point he was serving the Lord, he was studying the Word, and what he found was that Jesus told him to love his enemies and to bless his enemies. And these men who were stealing the fish that, you know, was feeding his family, was providing for his family, they, they were his enemies. And he thought, ah, that's pretty rough. That, that's a hard teaching, but it's what you say, Lord, so I'll give it a try. You know, he, he wasn't all convinced it was going to work, but he trusted. And so he went out the next day and he took his gun with him, but he still went out in his boat and he caught these guys red-handed taking the fish out of his nets and guess what he did he pulled up he gave them the fish out of his nets he helped them load them into their boat they didn't know what to think of that at all but you know what he said never once did anyone steal fish from him again now that is an incredible story and it's a reflection of God's teaching in the book of Luke that we're going to look at together. And God led me to Luke 6, verse 27, for my new memory verse. Uh, you know, I just kind of asked the Lord always, like, okay, where do you want me to go now, Lord? And this was the verse that he brought to mind. I mean, I didn't have it memorized, but, you know, we all kind of know we're supposed to love our enemies. And so... Uh, it's the verse that says, but to you who are willing to listen, I say, love your enemies. Well, we all have enemies. Now, if you don't think you do, you're fooling yourself. Because at a minimum, we here in America, we have enemies that want to kill us. All you have to do is think back to 9-11 or to watch the news almost, <sighs> seems like continually, to hear of terrorist attacks around the world, around the world for Christians especially, but also here in our own country. So we have enemies, but I think most of us probably have personal enemies as well. So what does the world say? How do we respond to our enemies? Those who hurt us, betray us, lie about us, deceive us, attack us, steal from us, or even want to kill us? The world says, get revenge, retaliate, even reject them. But what does Jesus say? Well, again, the scripture I'm going to use today is from the book of Luke. It's chapter 6, and we're going to read verses 27 through 36, and I'm reading this from the NLT version. And it's titled, Love for Enemies. But to you who are willing to listen, I say, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who hurt you. If someone slaps you on one cheek, offer the other cheek also. If someone demands your coat, offer your shirt also. Give to anyone who asks, and when things are taken from you, don't try to get them back. Do to others as you would like them to do to you. If you love only those who love you, why should you get credit for that? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good only to those who do good to you, why should you get credit? Even sinners do that much. And if you lend money only to those who can repay you, why should you get credit? Even sinners will lend to other sinners for a full return. Love your enemies. Do good to them. Lend to them without expecting to be repaid. Then your reward from heaven will be very great, and you will truly be acting as children of the Most High, for he is kind to those who are unthankful and wicked. You must be compassionate, just as your Father is compassionate. Now, I'm not Phil Robertson. I had to do a very in-depth in study on this passage. I had to read multiple commentaries 
articles, listened to several sermons by the likes of Martin Luther King, John Piper, Charles Spurgeon, Erwin Lutzer, and more. I had to take many, many notes, and I journaled. I'm not like Phil, but that's okay. That's who God made me, and he understands me, and he knows I need the repetition. You know, I need to hear it. I need to hear other people who are far more educated than me, far smarter than me, um, walking with the Lord a lot longer than me to help me to know exactly what Jesus is saying and what he means in this passage. So now I'm going to share with you what I've learned. The context of this is within Jesus' Sermon on the Mount where we also find the Beatitudes. And again, many of you are going to be familiar with that. You've heard of the Beatitudes and you've heard of the Sermon on the Mount. But this Sermon on the Mount, it is within the context of all of Jesus' teachings. Erwin Lutzer said, teaching was a disappointment. This particular teaching was a disappointment to the Jews who wanted transformation out of a Roman occupation. But Jesus, he taught about a transformation of the heart. He is teaching the heart behind the law. It's a tough on the believer love. It's an others focused love, not just tolerating our enemies. It's a hard teaching that caused many followers to leave Jesus. But his teaching should drive us to him because it's impossible to do on our own. This is impossible to do without the help of the Holy Spirit, Jesus Spirit. The IVP Bible Commentary says, Radical love that calls for self-denial and continued exposure to abuse is what Jesus is proposing. He's not just really proposing it. He's commanding it. He's, he's teaching it. Now, I want to be clear up front because I don't want anybody to misunderstand. I am not saying that if you are a husband or a wife living in a physically or mentally or emotionally or sexually or spiritually abusive relationship. And it's not just husbands and wives. I'm talking about anybody. God's not expecting you to stay in that, to keep yourself, you know, in danger. That's not what this is about. Martin Luther King says, the chief message of this passage is to do good to those who do evil to us and that it's absolutely necessary for our world to survive. And he said that in 1957. So when Jesus is giving us these words, these teachings, he's using some illustrations. He's, he's saying this in a way to shock his listeners then and now. He's saying it to bother us, to get our attention, to break the cycle of retaliation. Because in our humanness and in our flesh and in our culture, that's what we want to do. When someone does something to hurt us, does something that's evil to us, we want to retaliate. Jesus is contrasting the pharisaical interpretation of the law, who they understood the letter of the law as a mechanical legal requirement. He's contrasting that with his fulfillment of the law's true intent. The law did allow for retaliation, but Jesus calls for reconciliation that comes from exceeding righteousness that surpasses the scribes and the Pharisees' superficial righteousness. You know, righteousness just means being right with God. So let's start. That's just kind of giving you a little background, giving you some introductory information to help you understand, you know, where we're going, what we're going to do. So let's begin. We're going to look at these verses, and we're going to start, of course, with verse 27. And Jesus begins by saying, But to you who are willing to listen, I say. This requires our willingness to hear. We can't just hear with our physical ears, but we've got to hear with the spiritual ears of our heart. We've got to be willing to listen Then Jesus is saying this. So what does that do? It causes us to examine ourselves, to examine our hearts. And so I am going to ask you to do something. I'm going to give you an assignment. I want you this week 
to take time and just check your heart. Who is your enemy? Maybe plural, who are your enemies? If you're really honest with yourself, who is someone you'd hurt if given the opportunity? Now, spend some time alone in prayer and allow the Holy Spirit to speak to your heart and just write down what you hear. Remember, He already knows. He knows your heart. He knows your hurts. He knows who your enemies are. So you don't have to be afraid to admit it to Him or to yourself. Because again, I think pretty much we all have them. And I, you, we may be someone else's enemy. So pray, take time, and see what the Lord has to say. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for your son who came, who was the word in the beginning, and who was with you, and who came to the earth in flesh as the word of God. I thank you for this teaching, Lord, no matter how hard it is to understand, to fathom, to practice, but I thank you for it because it represents you, because you loved me when I was your enemy. You loved all of mankind when we were all your enemy. And you did it by sending your son. So Lord, I pray that each and every person that, that listens to this message this week, God, that they will just take time, Lord, to, to pray and to listen to you. And that you, Holy Spirit, will speak to them clearly, will reveal to them, and will um, even comfort them. Because this is not easy, God. But it is uh, your teaching and it is your way. And so we must follow you. I thank you, Abba. I always thank you for all you've done, all you're doing, and all you're going to do because you are omnipresent and you are omnipotent and you are so good. So I love you, I praise you, and I ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. So next week, we're going to continue and we're going to take a, an in-depth look at the rest of the verses and these passages and we're going to See what God has to say about loving our enemies. So I hope you will join me.